Hey everybody, welcome to Physics 111. I'm gonna be your instructor for the summer. My name's Brian Uthi. My preferred pronouns are he and him. If you haven't already, hop on over to the discussion board and introduce yourself. Let us know what your preferred name is and what your preferred pronouns are. And if you feel comfortable, <clears throat> share us a little information about yourself. Um, that discussion board is gonna serve as another spot for you to be able to ask questions in addition to office hours and through email. So we're all here to learn physics. And let's just start off by what is physics? So physics describes the interactions of energy, matter, space, and time. It deals with the very large, like galaxies up at the top left here, down to the very small of individual atoms, the stuff that makes up all of the materials and, and different objects around us. So it spans this very large scale. Simply put, physics describes why the things around us happen the way they do. And so you may not know any physics or think you know any physics, but really we all have these experiences that we've lived. We've seen things happen around us a certain way. So I encourage you throughout this course to bring in all of those experiences. You know, we've seen these things happen. And so as we're going through the concepts within all these learning modules, think back to experiences that you have. Why, if you've ever wondered why something happened the way it did, start to relate it to these concepts. I guess a word of caution I have with that is sometimes with this physics description, it may be different than what you thought was the reason why the thing happened. And so there may be some disconnect between how we describe things formally in physics and how we talk about them in everyday language. But nonetheless, bringing in these experiences, whether they are correct or incorrect from a physics standpoint, will help you visualize and make things more concrete when we're dealing with these concepts. So <clears throat> since physics describes all, all of these everyday interactions, some of these things have recently happened like the launch of the SpaceX rocket. Uh, physics describes why if I'm using my phone, I need to have a certain kind of glove to be able to get it to respond. It also describes why my phone even responds to my touch at all. And then it deals with probably less, uh, less interesting things, but why on ramps and off ramps have different speed limits. What determines why that speed limit's there and why it even matters. And so physics can give you that description and we'll be doing stuff that, that explains some of these things. So moving on, I'm sure a lot of you are going to be coming from different, different educational backgrounds. So your, your field is not gonna be physics, I assume. But if you look closely, the fingerprints from physics can be seen in all of these different areas. So with chemistry, we have, Chemistry deals with the interactions of different atoms and different molecules. Well, physics is what describes those interactions. Chemistry deals with those processes, but physics describes the interactions. With biology, we have how animals are moving, whether it's on the land, in the sky, in the water. Physics describes that motion. And more <clears throat> applied areas with athletic training or physical therapy, how joints are moving or how your limbs are moving, um, the stress on, on certain bones, those things are described, can be described from a physics standpoint. And then with engineering, the development of new technologies, how we're getting faster phones, how we're getting better resolution cameras, how our TVs are, are getting 
um, <clears throat> higher resolution and, and more energy efficient. All of these things are being driven by principles in physics. And then <clears throat> the building of, of pretty much all of the infrastructure is rooted in the laws of physics. How are these things so how are these things going to behave over time is going to be described using physics. And then with geology and environmental science, the idea of energy and energy consumption and climate change, those things are described using physics, which directly impacts um, those fields. So for all these different fields, you can trace back components to, how, to physics and how physics can apply to these different fields. So one thing that I encourage you to do throughout this course is to think about what it, your field of study is and how these concepts in physics can relate. Or if you have questions about it, reach out and we'll try and make that connection to make it things more concrete and, and make it more applicable to what you hope to do um, moving forward. And so, <clears throat> Now we're gonna hop into module zero. Uh, the learning objectives for module zero are listed here. In all of these intro videos, I'm going to be listing these learning objectives because I think it's useful. At the end of the module, I encourage you to go back and look through these and ask yourself, you know, when you're done this module, am I able to explain what physics is? Am I able to describe some applications of physics? And so if your answer is a kind of, or I have no idea, then you should go back to the note packet or the textbook and look. And if you're still unsure and you didn't just need a refresher on it, then you should reach out, you know, come to my office hours or email me uh, to make sure that, that you know all of these things because all of these concepts build on one another in physics. So if you don't have this base foundation right you know if you're missing a few bricks here and there as we start piling those bricks on you know it could it could leave for a shaky foundation um, so i really do encourage you to to use these learning objectives they're there to to guide you in your review for exams uh, review for quizzes because this is where we're choosing the problems from you know it's it's based off of these abilities so I encourage you to look back at these. They're gonna be on the module page, but they're also gonna be within these videos. So units that we're gonna be dealing with in physics, we're, we're primarily gonna be working in SI units or the international standard of units. And so those are comprised of four fundamental base units which are dealing with length, mass, time, and electric current. And so length has units of meters, mass has units of kilograms, time has units of seconds, and electric current, which we're not gonna be dealing with in this course, as units of amperes or amps for short. And so from these base units, all of the other units that we're gonna be dealing with can be written in terms of these base units. So a couple examples of that would be speed. Speed is uh, a measure of length over, change in length over change in time. So it's going to have units of meters divided by seconds, which is the fundamental units for length and time. And then this idea of force, you know, if I'm pushing on something, we're gonna to get to this later on, but this has units of Newtons, but Newtons, which is a derived unit, can be written in terms of uh, kilograms, meters, and seconds. So all of these derived units can be boiled down to the the in this case, three fundamental units that we'll be using in this course. And so another type of thing that we'll use is this idea of prefixes. So prefixes allow you to 
to give a scale to your number really. So really big for computers, you may have heard gigabytes or megabytes. And really that is just a measure of how many bytes. So with mega, it's 10 to the six bytes or giga, it's 10 to the ninth bytes. So it's a lot of bytes. And then if you go down with uh, centimeters or millimeters, we've heard of those things before. And so that is, you know, 10 to the minus two meters, uh, millimeters, which is 10 to the minus three millimeters. Um, so those are, those are smaller than the just single unit of one. And then it keeps going down. So the example I have here is this image of a human hair. So the, if you take a, take a hair out of your head, if you look at the width, the width of the hair is about 10 micrometers or 10 times 10 to the minus six meters. So it's, it's a pretty small lit, it's a pretty small width. And so these, these, these prefixes are things you might see in the wording of problems. So it's just another way to write out a numerical value. And so here's an example, I'm gonna flip around my computer to write on it. So and so here's an example of a, an, a unit conversion problem and an approximation problem, with, which are both listed within the learning goals. And so the question that, that we were asked is, how many heartbeats are there in a lifetime? And that's the only information that you're given. So this is where the approximating comes into play. So the question is, is can we approximate something about how many heartbeats there are? And so the first step that I did was to come up with an approximation. And so I chose the approximation to be there's 100 heartbeats in a minute. And so that seems, that's probably a little high for a resting heart rate, but I chose that to just kind of make the math easier. Again, you could choose 70 heartbeats per minute. It, it really doesn't matter all that much as long as you're within some sort of ballpark range. You know, you wouldn't choose 10 heartbeats per minute. I don't think that that person is probably alive at that point. Um, so 100 heartbeats per minute is the approximation. So that is how we're going to get this problem started and how we're going to build off of it. The next step is to, we need to know the heartbeats in terms of a lifetime. So we've got it started on some sort of framework for heartbeats. Now we need to get it in terms of a lifetime. And so this is where unit conversion comes into. So the first step is to convert minutes into hours. So that's one hour is 60 minutes. So minutes up top and minutes down below cancel each other. And then from hours, we wanna get into a day that's 24 hours is one day. So hours cancel up top and down below. And then from day, we wanna to get to a year. So one year is 365 days. So we have days up, days down below and days up top. So those cancel. And then finally we reach, so these were unit conversions. And then finally, we reach the last spot going from a year to a lifetime. So a lifetime is not a standard measure. So this is again, another spot to approximate. And what I chose was 70 years would equal a lifetime. Of course, there's much less and much longer, but 70 seems like the right, right range and is probably pretty close to what the standard US lifetime is right about now. So years cancel up top and down below. And ultimately we're left with one times 10 to the ninth heartbeats in a lifetime. And that ends up being what we were asked. We're asked how approximate or just asked how many heartbeats there are in a lifetime. And so we use unit conversion and approximations to be able to answer that question. So this skill of of approximating values is something that you're going to be able to practice more 
throughout this course, and it's going to serve you when solving physics problems.